Well, welcome to this week's St. Gabriel's Worship from Home. It's great to welcome you from wherever you are joining us from this week. And we pray that over the next 30 or so minutes that you will meet with God through song, through prayer and through his holy word. If you are new to watching us uh, and joining us in worship, please don't forget there's lots that goes on in the life of St Gabriel's throughout the week, uh, both online and on site. And you can find out more about what's going on by subscribing to our newsletter with uh, scanning the QR code or clicking the link uh, that goes below this video or even uh, checking out our website as well. And you can donate to the life and ministry of St. Gabriel's uh, by, again, clicking on the link below. So we come into a time of worship where we give thanks to God for all he's done in our lives. We pray for the world and we sing songs of praise. So let us pray now. Holy Spirit, come dwell amongst us as we come and give you our hearts. Lord, as we worship you, come and meet with us, we pray. Speak to us in the small, still voice and in the loud singing. Lord, come, we pray, and meet with us. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing our first song of praise together. So let us sing now.
to having praise God. We recognise that we don't always live up to his holy word, that we don't always do the things that we should. We don't treat others as we wish to be treated. We don't give to the poor and sometimes we leave things undone when we should really follow them up. They're the things Jesus called sin as he walked the earth, but we have a loving heavenly father. And so when we confess and say sorry to God for those things, then we, uh, we can receive forgiveness. So we take a moment to confess privately to God and publicly we s confess by saying, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead but now have life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And because we know that uh, Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins, know these words. May you have the forgiveness of the Father through the death of the Son. And may you live in the power of the Holy Spirit now and always. Amen. Now we are going to open up the scriptures together. Uh, we are studying Matthew throughout this time. So please open up the Bible, uh, your Bibles, as we uh, read the scriptures and then reflect. So our reading is taken from Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 to 23. When Jesus had heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Living in Na leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and of Napoli. To fulfill what is said through the prophet Isaiah, land of Zebulun and land of Napoli, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light and those living in the land of the shadow of death, the light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven comes near. As Jesus was walking beside the lake of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting their net into the lake for they were fishermen. Come. Follow me, said Jesus, and I will send you to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, Zebedee preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went through Galilee teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as we come in to this uh, time of reflection on the scriptures, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, who calls us from where we are into somewhere new. We thank you at the beginning of this year that you call us afresh. And we pray now that as we have heard your scriptures, as we reflect on them, may you open up our hearts and our minds to hear your voice, we pray. Amen. Well, for many of us, this is a scripture that is well known, something that we may have heard over and over again. And a lot of the time we reflect on Jesus calling us to be fishers of men. And there are nets and there are lots of things that go around that. And, uh, and we think we are being sent to be fishers of men. But today I want to reflect on something slightly different from that comes out from these pictures. Something that talks about being called and something that is being building. Where Jesus is calling us into relationship with God the Father, with himself, but also with each other. 
when he first called the disciples, he called them to come into a relationship with God the Father, with himself, but with also the other disciples that he called, a three-way relationship. He also called the disciples to be countercultural and go up against what they knew and what they uh, experienced and to go against the norm. And I also want to reflect on that and what that means for us as a church and as a congregation, whether that is online or on site. Because these scriptures are a call to relationship, but also a call to repent together. So let us just uh, reflect a little bit on the cultural context that uh, Jesus found himself in and the disciples found himself in. The call in Matthew to the first disciples that Jesus made was not only a call to follow him, but was a call for allegiance to be changed. It was a call to be part of the kingdom of heaven. It was a countercultural call against the Roman Empire and the imperial claims to lives of labour and of land. And it's a call today that brings us into a countercultural call of the current claims of possessions, of wealth, and of looking at me. It's me that is important because it's a countercultural call into relationship with Jesus and with one another, and not of self and individualistic, but of community. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, that called Jesus into action. It seemed to be the catalyst for Jesus' ministry and, a build, and our building now for a catalyst for our church, St Gabriel's, into a new phase. As Jesus went into a new phase, that catalyst, it is also a catalyst for us at St Gabriel's and I will talk a bit about that in a moment. The language of the kingdom used in the gospel sets up God's rule in direct, direct opposition to the Roman rule of that time. Thus the repentance could have also been understood as repent from your allegiance with the Romans to come and be part of the kingdom of God. The very two thing, the very thing that the two sets of brothers are asked to do when Jesus calls them. Some have wondered why Simon Peter and Andrew would walk away so quickly. Did they know Jesus beforehand? Were the sons of Zebedee more likely to follow Jesus because they saw the encounter with Simon Peter and Andrew? Were the men somehow disgruntled in their work? Were the sons of Zebedee disgruntled with their father? We don't know. We don't know why they went. But Warren Carter notes that as fishermen, these sets of brothers were likely under contract to the Roman Empire. As brothers and, and possibly members of a cooperative with James and John, they have purchased their lease or contract with Rome's agents that allows them to fish and obligates them to supply a certain quantity of fish. And so their actions in following Jesus were a disruption, even if small, to Romans' economic interests. They were a disruption there, and maybe they were disgruntled and they wanted to disrupt and uh, take a different and separate life. And by choosing Jesus, the brothers chose God's rule over Rome. They chose to fish their land and their people for God's purposes rather than exploiting it for Romans, Roman, Rome's gain. Not Roman's gain, Rome's gain. They chose to join Jesus, his ministry in the promised land rather than to align themselves with the interests of the occupiers. 
Rome wanted the men to catch fish for the advancement of the imperialist expansion and Jesus wanted them to catch people for God's rule which as Jesus will demonstrate throughout God, the Matthew's gospel the rule is mercy and justice and plenty when you come in to that place so having explored that I wonder what that says to us about being called into a countercultural place, about being different and standing out differently. I don't know if Jesus was scared when John was called, taken into prison that he withdrew and went to somewhere else, but it meant that he fulfilled the prophet Isaiah, who we studied before Christmas, um, to say that they have seen a great light. The kingdom of heaven has come near. And I think that is quite a key passage for us as Christians and as church members of St. Gabriel over this coming year. Because it would be really, really great if anyone who had a interaction with St. Gabriel's through ourselves individually and as a church felt that the kingdom of heaven had come near to them because they have met with St. Gabriel's. And as I said, when Jesus calls those first disciples, when he calls us, he calls us in to a relationship with himself, with God the Father, and also with one another, with the community of Christ in our church and in our congregation, wherever we may be watching or wherever we may be worshipping together. And we are called into that relationship to be disciples of his, of Jesus. And when we are called into that relationship with Jesus, we are called into relationship with other disciples, with the Father himself and with each other as we journey together as a church. As individuals and as a church, we are called in that same way, to be together in joint worship of God and Christ. And that's key, being together, whether we are in an online congregation or whether we are in an in-person congregation, or whether we are a hybrid between the two. And if you are joining us online only, comment below. Let us know that you're there so we can pray for you and we know that you are part of us as a congregation and as a church. And as we journey into this year, being together and worshipping together and coming together to share our faith together and to support one another so that we can then create um, coming near to the kingdom of Christ for others in our communities wherever we are is important because we need to build together our church congregation and also our church building. We have a church to build this year. We have a church to build, not a physical one, although that is coming, but a congregational one. I'm talking about us together, being together and building us as a congregation together. From learning from the scriptures together, to worshipping and coming together throughout the week, either online or in person, or on site, should I say. And that means that there is a step change in us as a church and us in a congregation. A recognition that we are growing and that means that I can't be everywhere all at once, that it takes us all individually to bring together, to look out for one another, to support one another and to study together. It takes us all to know and be and look after and see together. The Bible and the prayer is key and we'll be spending some time in prayer together. We'll be spending some time over the year in study together. 
We'll be looking at the book of Acts over this coming year as we learn what it was to form a church in a society that was multicultural, multi-ethnic, in a society that had many other distractions and had many other gods. A society that is not so different to the one that we live in now. And so as we learn from that book over the coming months, we will learn what it is to be church and form church. We will also get to learn prayer and the importance of prayer. And as we do that, uh, we are re-establishing a prayer ministry team for our on-site worship, but also that prayer ministry team to pray for people throughout the week. So if you have a prayer request, comment or send it in via our website. And we are called to repent as Jesus did and to, uh, as Jesus called others to repent and come together. And I have to say that as a church, we haven't always got it right. I haven't always got it right. And we have to repent for that and say sorry. I've not always been focused on the things and sometimes I say and talk about things um, and say that I'll do things and actually I don't have that time. And so if that is one of the cases, I'm sorry. But that is part of what it is to be church, to apologise to one another, to forgive one another but also to recognise that it is just not one person but it is a congregation. It is all that is responsible of building our church. And you see, Sundays are only one part of it. We have a church that meets throughout the week in different places and different locations. We have a church that meets monthly in different places and different locations. We have a church that meets as, it, uh, as small groups. We have a church that meets in larger groups. We have a church that meets online and we have a church that meets in on site. We have a church that meets in hybrid when we come together for our Bible studies. So whether you are just someone who worships us online or whether you are someone who worships us on site, we can come together at times to worship together and to support one another. And we won't be perfect. That's what relationships are. They are not perfect, but they take time to work together. And we saw that the disciples weren't perfect, were they? When they were put under pressure, they scattered. They questioned their faith. They denied their faith. When Jesus called them in the first place, they were being countercultural, like we are as a church, standing out as different. And as they were countercultural and they were different, then so they grew as disciples and as in stature with Jesus and in Christ. And we won't always be perfect. Sundays and worship will not always be perfect. And our congregation life will not always be perfect. But if our eyes are focused on Jesus and on the cross, then what that means is that we put aside those imperfections and focus on Christ because that's what's matter. We are called to be fishers of people, to go out and to proclaim the gospel, to make sure that people know that when we live our lives, that the kingdom of heaven has come near to them through our words, our deeds and our actions. And as we do that, God will add daily to his number. So as we go into this year, as we reflect on what it is to be a member of the kingdom of Christ, as we take that call up again to have that relationship with God, with Jesus and with each other, we recognise that the kingdom 
of God comes near and we take it into that place. But to be able to do that, we have to come together in worship, in study, in fellowship, so that we can build one another up, so that we can recognise those times when we don't get it right, that we can repent and continue building our relationship with Christ and each other and bring the kingdom of God near. So this year, as a church, we are going to rebuild and refocus our time together on the book of Acts. We are going to follow Jesus' call like Paul and Peter and the early disciples did into a new place, somewhere where we don't know yet, but God has already got sorted. And as we do that, Things like other, like bricks and mortar, will look after themselves because our hearts and minds will be focused on that call that Jesus made to lead us wherever he will take us. And we don't know where that will be, but what we do know is that we will do it together, faithfully following Christ. We will do that in pairs, in groups and individually and we will come together to worship Christ, to give thanks with all he has done. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for the call you put on the lives of those first disciples and that call that they responded to. And we thank you that we can respond to that same call afresh daily. And Lord, as we come into this year, guide us, we pray. Take us on new journeys, take us to places that we haven't seen and show us new things. Amen. So having reflected on the scriptures together, we are going to sing praise to God again by singing our next song. So let's sing together.
having proclaimed our faith, we turn to prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for being with us today as we gather together in our Kings Hill community. Thank you for giving us the opportunity of being in relationship with you and for us to know that you are walking alongside us. We pray that we won't be distracted by the world when it's time to seek your presence and live and have our being with you. You know our thoughts, Lord, and what we need at any given time. But this is the time we can bring our requests to you in fellowship and group prayer. Help us to be like the disciples who left their fishing nets to follow Jesus. Give us the right opportunities, however small, and, and alert us to the possibilities that we can share our knowledge of Jesus in a way that generates an interest and intrigue. When you dwell in us, please let your light shine so others can see it and be inquisitive when we get a chance to speak to them about you. As we contemplate the future of our planet, let us pray first against the wars raging throughout the globe and the terrible atrocities that man is inflicting on his fellow man. Some wars have been raging for years and global stability declining. Few clock conflicts are ending, many continuing, and some getting markedly worse. We pray, Lord, that the international community be given the tools, cohesion and approach to address the world's longest and deadliest conflicts and to bring peace to Ukraine very soon. We pray for our government as they seek to balance the books and bring down inflation. We pray too against the rises in food and energy prices and ask you to be with those struggling to meet their families' needs. Help them to find new ways to cope within their budgets and not be so desperate that high interest rate loans seem the only way forward. We pray around pay increase demands. Give us the wisdom to know what's fair and sustainable. Help us to retain staff in the NHS and find the resources to attract more people into, into the profession, thereby decreasing the workload on the existing staff. Help them also to feel valued and strengthened whilst the NHS finds new ways to exist in a more sustainable way. We lift up all those who are sick, Elise, Stuart, Hazel, and those coping with ongoing in-health ill health for which the cure is long or seems unreachable. We pray for our king whilst he prepares for his coronation and seeks to reunite his family. Open all their hearts as they try to resolve their differences through wisdom and forgiveness. We pray for Mark and family and our church building which has at last left the starting blocks. We thank you for Mark's return from sabbatical and ask you to bless him in all the, the thoughts and ideas he's had during his special time. And we pray protection over him and the family. Please help us to fundraise for the building and to continue to provide for the food bank. We ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And we bring our prayers to a close by saying the words that Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. So we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. 
Amen, indeed. Well, we're going to sing our final hymn of praise in a moment, but just a reminder to join us every week online, our on-site worship, and uh, to find out uh, what's going on through our newsletter and uh, all else that's happening in the life of St. Gabriel's. So let us uh, pray and then let us sing. So Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of worship together and we pray that as we go into your world that you will bless us, that you will keep us safe and that we may dwell and live in your way all the days of our lives. Amen. And may you know the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. May it be with you and sit amongst you now and forever. Amen. So we go in peace this week to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Let us sing our praise to God. In Christ alone my hope is found He is my light, my strength, my song this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love. Of Christ I stand In Christ alone Who took on flesh Fullness of God in helpless play This gift of love And righteousness Scorned by the ones He came to save Till on their my day.